Hey guys, what's up? This punk guy here. Thanks for joining me back on my review channel. Now let's talk about some of the content going on or lack of content going on on this channel. And we all know that's because of what's been going on with all this COVID stuff, all the coronaviruses, you know, been kind of swaying, lots of ups and downs going on mostly downs so i haven't been able to do a lot of reviews in the last couple of months so i thought it'd be kind of fun to you know get a little corona party going on and talk about some uh reviews in a way that i normally don't get to just kind of quick short fun reviews so that's what i'm gonna do i'm gonna call this the corona mini review so if you guys got a corona or a seltzer or whatever pop it open and let's get to these mini reviews <laughs> And you're probably wondering why I decided to do a short form instead of the normal long form I do for each ones that I missed. And that's because I pride myself in buying the hard copy of the vinyls and really uh, supporting the band. Whether I like the record or not, it's at least me uh, putting money back into the scene to support our, our local scene, basically. With all the mail stuff going on, trying to get a hold of copies and things like that, it just wasn't feasible during the quarantine. Now the first mini review I want to talk about is the Suicide Machines Revolutionary Spring. Now this dropped back in March and um, it's their seventh full length album. It was released on Fat Records, but also it's been 15 years since they've had an album. So this has been long awaited. If you don't know who, who the Suicide Machines are, they are a ska punk kind of like third wave, uh, a little into the hardcore type of sound of that era, that genre of punk. Most people probably recognize them from the Tony Hawk game, of course. So, so let me talk a little bit about the reasons why I didn't get to do a full review on them and because I really wanted to and I really wanted these guys to shine to, you know, showcase these guys because it has been 15 years since their last album. And first off, you know, they had a limited record release and like that sold out in three hours. I didn't even get a chance to buy it on the pre-sale. So then, of course, there was a European uh, variant uh, laying around for a while. And when I finally decided to get my lazy ass off and actually buy it, quarantine hit, went into furlough, and I wasn't sure exactly financially where I would be, so I decided not to buy the record. Now let's get right into the review. Now first off, if you like Third Wave Ska, you're definitely going to like this. It's a total uh, return to form for these guys. Just a lot of fun, high jinx energy from these guys. Um, they, they haven't skipped the beat, really. And even though this album is really fun and a lot of high energy, it's pretty much treading the same waters. You're going to get what you expect to get from these guys. And not to say that's a bad thing, because that's what you want on a comeback album. You want to hear the same band you fell in love with back then, uh, as opposed to them coming up with something completely 180 degrees different. So it's a good, fun ska punk album. Lyrically, it's going to be what you expect from this type of punk album. A kind of paint by numbers on uh, social commentary and politics, which isn't a bad thing, because it still needs to be said. Case in point, Bully and Blue, the opening track off this album, is a great commentary on police brutality, especially with everything going Going on right now in the world it um, it says a lot it doesn't really say anything different just kind of gives you what you expect to hear but it needs to be said it's probably one of my favorite tracks up there with cheers to yeah which is the closing track so like I said these are quick reviews so I'm gonna give this a four out of five stars it's super fun and super catchy if you like third wave ska you're gonna love this it's what you expect from the suicide machines it's what you want from them coming back from such a long hiatus the reason why I didn't give it a five out of five perfect rating is because I feel it is kind of missing some it factor if you will to make it a good album to a great album and coming back from 15 years that's what you kind of wanted to hit that great album status and I feel it's kind of missing something I don't know exactly what it is but it still gets a good rating out of me four out of five stars So next up is Western Addiction's Fell Bray, which is their third full-length album, which also dropped on Fat Records. And if you don't know who these guys are, they're more of a hardcore band from San Francisco, leaning more on the old traditional hardcore of, like, Black Flag Minor Threat sound as opposed to, like, the metal-y stuff that comes out now. Now, because of the quarantine, there was a hold on the production of the album. So I actually did buy the album, and I will show it to you guys if it comes in time before I record this at the end. So this is a very unique uh, album review to me, per se, because I've seen these guys a couple of times live, which they're really amazing, really fun, lots of energy, but I've never heard an album straight through. So I found the musicianship in this album to be really top-notch, actually. When I found the structure and the organization of the songs being crafted were really great, too. But the one thing I gotta say is, to be honest, it just wasn't for me. I don't know what it was, but I didn't feel a real connection towards this album. Like I said, everything is there, it just didn't hit me the way I thought it was going to hit me. 
nothing really concrete stuck with me and I just kind of stopped listening to him. But I am going to give you some recommendations. I would definitely say go listen to the title track, uh, Frel Bray. I really love the singer's voice in this. He kind of has kind of an Ian mckay s type of sound to him when he screams. And I also really love the lyrics to They Burned Our Paintings. It's a real good metaphor. I think everyone should listen to that track. I'm going to definitely give it a three, 3 out of 5 stars. Like I said, if, uh, if you're into that sound, if you like that sound, it's for you. This is probably a really strong outing by them. I wouldn't know. Like I said, this is my first time really hearing them. So maybe I just need to listen to them more. But I'm going to give it a 3 out of 5 stars. Um, it didn't really resonate with me, but that doesn't make it a bad album by any means. The lyrics and the organization, the, the way they create and put the structures of the songs together is just really kind of cool and unique and a little bit different to what a lot of other bands are. You know, copy and paste, vocal, chorus, vocal, chorus. So the third album I want to get into is Danzig Sings Elvis. Bad. This album is just bad. The production bad, the singing's bad. It's all around a bad album. And I'm not even a fan of Elvis, but he really butchered Fever. It's unlistenable. I'm not even I'm not even going to go into details with this. This is the lowest rating I've ever given any album review on here. One out of four stars. I don't know why he didn't pull it off, why the production was so bad, why he doesn't sound as good. I know he can't sing like he used to, but he could have hit it a lot better than this. He just Anyway, don't buy this album. Now let's do a complete 180. So the final album I want to talk about is Screeching Weasel's new album, uh, Some Freaks of Activism, which is their 14th full-length album that they self-released. Now this was released back in back in early March, uh, March 24th, um, and it is their follow-up to 2015's Baby Fact Act 1. Say that a bunch of times. There is no hard copy for this. I don't know why they decided not to do a limited vinyl run or anything like that, but there's no hard copy, and like I said, I like to promote the bands that I do the reviews on, so that's why I didn't do it, and I'm putting it in this mini review. If you don't know who Screeching Weasels are, which uh, you should, they are Chicago-based pop punk band in the style of the Ramones S type of pop punk like Teenage Bottle Rockets. And I gotta be honest, out of all the albums that came out during quarantine, I love this one the most. Ben Weasel has found a way to hone that sound really and not make it sound repetitive or tiring. It's really kind of refreshing. Each song brings a new element that he hasn't previously done before, yet at the same time, it's similar enough to where you can comprehend where he's coming from, how it is evolved. What I mean by that is they were kind of sounding repetitive and tiring and uh, like, you know, some of the songs sounded the same. But uh, after the Baby Fat album, which was kind of um, a musical, I guess, that he created, um, you could see how that actually helped to evolve his sound and round it out a little more. He's implemented it into this album, which I think he does a fantastic job. He's really pushed the creativity in this familiar sound. <laughs> We'll know that Ben Weasel is a huge controversial figure in the punk community. In fact, I think some people might not like this channel just because I decided to review this album. The lyrics in this album help prove why he's such a controversial person. The album's theme is really based on social and political commentary that is really just sharp as a knife, uh, really stabbing at kind of the ultra-extreme leftism. And whether you agree with it or not, it's, it's highly amusing to me anyway. And like I said, if uh, you're a punk and you're not ruffling some feathers, you're not doing it right. And please don't get me wrong here, guys. I'm not saying I agree with 100% of the stuff that he's saying. I just find it amusing that he's not afraid to uh, poke a stick at it. So in conclusion, this album gets a 4.5 out of 5 stars for me. It is a almost perfect album. It is one of his best albums that's come out in a while, to be honest. Um, I think the only album I like more than this is uh, the 91, My Brain Hurts. So thanks guys for watching this video. I hope you guys like the Corona Edition mini reviews that I did. And if you guys would like to see me do another one, let me know in the comments. And also let me know what your favorite album was out of these four albums or any album that I might have missed uh, during the quarantine. Sorry, I've been drinking for a while. But that's not the point. The point is, if you like this review, don't forget to give it a like, a thumbs up, and um, subscribe like always. Uh, as those kids say, hit that bell for those notifications, and I'll be coming out with more regular full reviews. So until then, guys, uh, like whenever they decide to come back, I'll see you guys at a show.